This is game three here between Charles Estomba and Aaron Barich. Three poison on Charles' Jeskai's side. He's casting an Electrolyze. We see on Aaron's side, he's got a lot going on. We have Become Immense. We have Spell Skite. I'm not sure if he's killing him with damage or with poison. Looks like there's a Dryad Arbor that's doing some attacking. We're mutagenic growthing a Dryad Arbor. Yeah, I think in, there's a Pendlehaven activation as well. A lot of things. <laughs> You, you want to ask the question, who's slowing this match down? It, it's not Barich. <laughs> Logic not from Charles. Looks like we are fighting over mutagenic growth. Looks like Barich with six other mana available. Uh oh. So big delta. Crack and a fetch land. Are we looking at a become immense? That's the or fifth card in the graveyard. He puts the land to play tap, so maybe it's just ground swell. It's not bad. And that is what it'll be, Groundswell to protect. So I think we have an attack, we have a Pendlehaven activation, we have an Electrolyze in response. <laughs> yep. So tried to kill Electrolyze in response to Pendlehaven. Mutagenic Growth in response to Electrolyze. Logic Knot on the Mutagenic Growth, and now Groundswell targeting the Dryad Arbor again. And it, it has to be a counterspell for Charles, because anything like a Lightning Bolt or a Path to Exile just gets redirected to the Spell Skype. Because if it is Pendlehaven, Groundswell, and Dryad Arbor, that is six damage. Yeah, Make yeah. that seven with the Noble Hierarch. This is definitely a lethal attack. Something like Negate is what he's going to need here. Two damage on the Dryad Arbor, and Aaron shrugs. So do you, he draws off Electrolyze, still. Lightning Helix at the Spellskite, okay. That gains some life. Yeah, and I'm guessing the Spellskite ate one of the redirects. Part of the electrolyze. Part of the, it ate part of the electrolyze, so it will it will die. Charles will go up to nine, and this attack will confirm, I believe, is for seven. It looks like maybe less. Charles at four. Plenty of lands in hand for Charles, though. Yeah, Serum Visions is the play. Teferi and Logic Knot on top. Looks like he'll keep the Teferi. He says no to the Logic Knot. Teferi's a redraw. He has to be somewhat concerned about these Ink Moth nexuses. Sure. Yeah, two Ink Moth in play. Which way does Aaron want to go? He can't... <laughs> it's a little tough to attack the Arbor into Celestial Colony. It kind of depends what he has for removal spells on top of that. Yeah. He'll activate an Ink Moth nexus. And it looks like just Nexus is going to attack. He'll Pendlehaven it to a 2-3 and exalt it to a 3-4. So I think what he wants to have happen here is if the Colonnade blocks, he'll give up the Ink Moth, but then it'll be a 1-1 Colonnade in the future. Right, and that's the difference with attacking with those two creatures. Yeah, and this is Charles's only Colonnade. So it can make the block. It shrinks. And then next time he tries to make that block, Aaron will be at the ready. Yeah, it's not clear that Aaron even had a pump spell here. So I, I don't even know if that attack was potentially lethal, but the Dryad Arbor is very easy to make lethal. Charles draws the Teferi he scried to the top. And a bit of a, a check on his side. He has some fetch lands. I don't know <laughs> that he wants to do one, but he does. So go down to three. And now, now the Dryad Arbor with Pendlehaven and Noble Hierarch, that he's lethal. So the Teferi yeah. is going to have to do something. Yeah, he has to have a good reason to make this fetch, right? Right. We'll see just what that reason is. He'll have to plus the Teferi if he wants to activate Colonnade here. Correction, Charles actually, we had his life total wrong. He was at three and fetched to two, so it was lethal both ways. He will draw. Ooh. What did we hit? I want to say that's Settle the Wreckage. And untapping two lands seems pretty nice with Settle the Wreckage. Here we go, back over to Aaron's side. So it's on, on his face, he's demonstrating that he can activate Celestial Colonnade. And depending on what attacks, he could also just exile it with Settle. And here's Dryad Arbor. It'll be pumped by Pendlehaven. And Charles will make the block, the chump block appears with Colonnade. Doesn't want to use Settle the Wreckage just yet, and I like that. Yeah. Definitely seems reasonable to save that spell when you have that colony that's just going to chump block something inevitably. Draw from Teferi, and it looks like turn zero will be hit here on Charles's turn. I wonder how many lifetime draws Aaron Barich has. <laughs> I bet he can count them on one hand. We'll see if he can get this one. It seems unlikely that Charles can win this in turns. 
Right. So, well, so that's kind of the question of, has he drawn the correct spells to buy him enough time? Right. Settle the wreckage we know. The colonnade's gone. I think his other cards are lands and another Teferi. So that's, some work to be done. I believe that is what I see. If you know you're not playing for the win here anymore, does it make sense for Charles to jam that second Teferi, draw another card? So the Teferi's not getting attacked, so... Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to still leave up the settle, so I, I do like that. And that's what he'll do. And given the sort of counter spells that are available in Barrage's sideboard, Teferi should resolve here. Right. Yeah, not much spell piercing out of Aaron's sideboard, if any. There's two in the main deck. I spotted okay. an invocation in his hand, and I think that's what that is. Okay, so he's debating the spell pierce here. I actually have a bingo square for an invocation. I kind of hope he has one. <laughs> Teferi will draw. He will have two untapped sets of untapped triggers as he's used two different Teferis. Uh, Charles is going to suspend an ancestral vision now. Ryan, we're we're in extra turn, so I don't think that I don't really think that makes much sense here. Yeah, that that's not going to come off. It, it adds to your argument at the end of turns of will you concede to me? Yeah, yeah I, all right. I have an ancestral vision. I'll suspend. That that is what it does. Yeah. Untap of four lands. Back over to Aaron. This is turn number one. If Aaron has both of his spell pierces, though, Charles only has three mana up. Yes. Yeah. He has seven mana total, so yeah. it doesn't work. You're right. Let's see if he does. I believe it's just the one. <laughs> it's interesting that the Dryad Arbor is Aaron's most valuable threat here. <laughs> if the Dryad Arbor gets answered, this Blighted Agent isn't as threatening. Charles can still actually take some hits off it. Yeah, it's not clear that Barrage has the pump spells that he can make an infect attack or actually lethal. What Aaron is wondering is what I think here is whether he wants to swing with the Ink Moth and the Dryad Arbor. Yeah, seeing as the Arbor is already lethal, yeah. do you want to add a second creature? And he's respecting Settle the Wreckage here. We're getting... We're, I guess Noble Hierarch is a source of, of regular damage. So he'll attack with Dryad Arbor. Noble Hierarch Exalted Trigger on the stack, he will Pendle Haven. This is an attack for three. This should force action. And it does. Settle the wreckage. Dried Arbor's gone. But remember, Noble Hierarch can attack for one. Yes. It can't do that in conjunction with Ink Moth yeah. Nexus, but it can attack for one. Blighted Agent. Now, if you're on Charles' side, do you draw with Teferi, or do you tuck away the Noble Hierarch? <laughs> <laughs> it's a real question as he goes to turn two. If you have nothing going on, yeah. I think you have to minus three. Well, that's not nothing. That was Snapcaster Mage, and he's going to plus. That is a <laughs> good draw. That is nothing at all. That is definitely not a nothing. Do a fetch land. That is nothing. He's at one. Yeah, I don't like that one so much. He'll pass. I think he has Lightning Bolt and Snapcaster were the two cards he picked up this turn. Okay. Some really good tools available. Yeah. It's looking like the kind of game that an untimed play is going to favor Charles, but that is not what we're doing here. A swing and a pendle haven. And is Charles going to respond? No. I can take three poison. Barrett does have a vines of basswood. Okay. So that so would make the attack that's lethal. lethal. Yeah. Kicked vines. Go for the kill. Going for groundswell, looks like. He groundswell. fetched a land there. So he has vines back up in case of something like uh, Path to Exile. The nice thing is that Settle the Wreckage off the Snapcaster Mage doesn't care about any kind of any of this kind of stuff. Right. And Charles has wisely picks the right card there. Didn't go for anything like Path to Exile. Would have lost. Yeah. You'd need a Siren Storm Tamer for this one. 
And back to Charles we go. Turn four, this is his last turn. And he'll draw. Yeah, Charles won't be able to finish this game. Now we'll see if Aaron can. Last turn. A lot of mana to combo into. Can Aaron put it together? Activates Ink Moth Nexus. Actually using Pendlehaven. Oh, Legend ah. rolls the Pendlehaven away. Fancy. An attack in for make that three poison right now. Aaron just has vines. Yeah, I think he has Spell Pierce back up. That one's not good for anything here. Yeah, no, I mean, he can fruitless. Yeah, you see the look at the message, like, you, you got a thing, right? Yes, I, I'll dispel your thing. Aaron will spell pierce it and give me the bingo square. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and that looks like it's going to be a draw. Charles wisely pays two for his spell pierce. And, yep. Yeah, and in the 3-0 bracket, especially with the attendance we have here, I have to imagine.